guys, Mrs. C here. Just wanted to take a minute to go over really quickly our week four new grammar and our art and science for this week. So to get started, we did geography as we normally do, did some blob mapping to start off, and then we moved on to our state. So we started with um, Louisiana, and we made an L in Louisiana because it's in the shape of an L. So we did Louisiana, the capital of Baton Rouge. Then we moved next door to Mississippi at the capital of Jackson. We drew an M in Mississippi. And then we moved over to Alabama and drew an A there with the capital of Montgomery. Then we moved over to Georgia and drew a big G there with the capital of Atlanta. And then for Florida, we drew a tiny F in Florida, but we actually turned Florida into an alligator, just kind of outlining it. I'm putting a line down the middle and drawing some teeth so we had a little gator on there. So um, I sometimes have gotten confused on which are the southern states and the order that they go in. So we made up a little acronym that said large, mean, alligators, grin, ferociously. So that's our L for Louisiana, M for Mississippi, A for Alabama, G for Georgia, and then F for Florida. And we just uh, did some pointing, and I would say the capitals, they would say the states, they would say states, and I would say the capital. And then we just did some er erased our letters in different orders just to kind of mix it up a little bit. So then we moved on to our math. So for math this week, we had sevens to the tune of Frere Jaca. And we had eights to the tune of If You're Happy and You Know It. And for our sevens, we jumped on a circled number. For eights, we um, like squatted down on the circled number. And we did that multiple times until we had all the numbers circled. So we were nice and out of breath after that. Well, at least that was. So um, moving on from there, we went to timeline. For our timeline, we started with early Native Americans. So for that, we did an F. This is sign language F for feather. And we put it up on our head. Sorry, you can't see that we're. So we had F. And then we made the gold sign, which is a Y. And it comes down from here. So that's like yellow. That's actually the sign for gold. So they were, um, you know, had lots of jewelry and so feathers and jewelry. So early Native Americans. Then we had Israel. So that is an I, sign language I, which looks like this with your pinky up. Right in the middle of your chest. Israel divides into two kingdoms. The pointers together and then divide. Homer and Hesiod, they made H's. So an H is two fingers pointing sideways. And your hand looks like this in the back. So Homer and Hesiod together. And then Rome founded, pounded our fist by Romulus, sign language R, which is your middle finger crossed over your pointer, and also made an R here for Remus. So Rome founded by Romulus and Remus. Then we had Israel falls to Assyria. So we made an I for Israel, and then an A, and it fell. So Israel falls to Assyria. And then we have Assyria falls to Babylon. Lautza, so we're doing kind of like this... Kind of, I don't know what, what sign that is, but we're doing that. Middle finger touching your thumb. Confucius. Buddha. So that's what we did for timeline this week. Um, for our history sentence, we got our egg shakers out and we marched around the room and sang our song. We read through it a couple times and then we switched directions and marched the other way just using our shaker. It's a pretty simple song this week. Uh, so the shakers worked really well. For that, the kids seem to pick up pretty quickly on this song, so they might already know it by the time you're teaching it this week, which is pretty great. Uh, then we moved on to Latin, and this week for Latin, I introduced my friend, Leo the Latin Lion. Isn't his hair great? I just think it's super awesome. <laughs> It has so much movement to it. So uh, Leo, our Latin lion, he pronounces all of our Latin words. And then I say all of the English words. And for the kids, they have their own little Latin lions. Um, I found this printable, I don't know, maybe been on Pinterest. But it's one of those little foldy things like we used in middle school to find out who we were going to marry. <laughs> and I glued them so they just can talk. So we had their little Latin lions. So their lions said the Latin words. And then they said the English words. So I will pronounce them for you in case you are not sure how to pronounce them. Because um, some of them look like they're pronounced differently than what they are. We also did our Latin in a lion voice. Because, you know, you have to do it a lion voice when you have a lion. So we had erat, and that was was. Then we had sunt, which is r. And then we had est, which is e. 
And then we had what looks like Venet, but is actually pronounced Wainet. So Wainet, which is came. And I helped the kids remember that by Wainet, like the way you came. So, I mean, hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> and then we have a very long one, which is pronounced Perhiberet. So Perhiberet. Um, and that means bear. And you can kind of hear the word bear in there. So Perhiberet. So Perhiberet. And then we had Crederent. So Crederent. And that is to believe. And so for those of you adults, um, you've probably heard the phrase lend credence to, which means make more believable. So that's kind of how I've been remembering that one. Um, so that was Latin for science. We had what are the three parts of the nervous system. So we're doing like your nervous, three parts of the nervous system. They are brain. So you're grabbing your head kind of like you have a brain freeze. Brain. And then we did spinal column. So I'm just using my fingers to go up and down my spinal. I keep saying spinal column. Spinal cord. So go up and down. And then we did nerves and we kind of shook all over the place. So the three parts of the nervous system are brain, spinal cord, and nerves. All right. Then we did our English. So for English, we um, learned some hand motions that are going to come into play as we're actually learning verbs later. So these are the verb principal parts. We have infinitive. So we put our hands together and we made the infinitive sign with our hands. So it's like a sideways figure eight. Then we did present and we just kind of punched forward like we're in the present right here and then we did past so I'm like hitchhiker thumb in over my shoulder and then we had present participle and past participle infinitive present past present participle past participle and we'll use those again as I said like as we actually learn verbs later on to help them remember what part what type of verb excuse me um, the word that we're saying is later when we're learning our verbs. So that was all that we did for new grammar, I believe. It goes so much faster when I do it on the video than in class. <laughs> so for art this week, we did abstract art and we practiced first um, by just doing some oils and I gave them directions and they were allowed to do it however they wanted. So it was really fun to see because everyone's looked different at the end, even though we all have the same direction. So I'll show you mine really quick so um, you can kind of see what I did. We use our color pencils for this, so we switched pencils for every um, type of part of the oil that we did to make our abstract art. So we did three red lines first. So they were allowed to do their red line anywhere on their paper that they wanted to. We had some that did them like this, straight down the paper. Um, we had some that did them, you know, just divided it right into triangles there. And then the next thing we did is we switched to blue, and I told them to pick one area of their paper and do three um, circles. So we did, I did three circles here. So you could pick any area and do that. Then we moved to green and we did two dots in a different area than the circles on their paper. And then we went to orange and we did two wavy lines. Again, they could do these anywhere on their paper. So let's see, for example here, I'll show you this one again because it looks so different from mine. We've got our wavy lines right here. And then for the last thing, we switched to purple and we did angled lines. We did five angle lines. So then we showed everyone our paper, which was really fun because they all look so different. So we've got this and let's see, this one and this one. So they all looked really different, which was fun. And we just talked about how abstract art looks different to everyone. Like when they looked at mine, even though I wasn't trying to at all, they all thought I was drawing Easter eggs, which I see that now, but I didn't see that when I was drawing it because that's not what I was trying to draw. I was just drawing abstract. So everybody sees something different in abstract art, which is fun. Then for our actual art project, we um, used our names to make abstract art. So uh, some of you may have seen this before. Some of, for those of you who haven't, I'll just kind of explain what you do because I told the kids they could go home and do their family's names if they wanted to. So. We did our first name, so my first name is Lauren, and what you start off with is you do the first letter of your name. So your paper can be turned anyway, so I have my L right here. And then I turned my paper, and I did an A. And for tutors, when you're doing this, you want to really encourage them to touch the edges of their paper so that it makes definitive areas. 
in um, on their paper because otherwise later it's going to be kind of hard to color everything in. So then I turned my paper again. And as we were doing our letters, we were discussing what parts of oils make up different letters. So again, turned my paper. And um, so like for my R here, my R is made up of a line, a curved line, and then another line. So there's R and then turned it again. And I have my E right here and then turned it one last time and I've got my N. So if they have, let's see where my go, there it goes. If they have more than four letters in their name, you can encourage them to maybe make some of them slightly smaller to fit into areas where there's a lot of negative space or white space. Um, so that they get a lot of these um, areas of, I guess you call it, a lot of shapes um, from the lines intersecting doing that. So then as you can see, we just started coloring in those sections um, and they all turned out really great. Um, this, she was able to get all of hers colored in and this is only with four letters in her name. So I mean, it still looks really cool even if you don't have a lot of letters. So we've got that one. So here she used um, her S over here to make kind of a really fun shape to color in. Um, I'll show you one more here. Let's see. Uh, we've got this one. So it, they all just turned out really neat. And like I told them, they could go home and do their family's names, which would be fun. Make a piece of personalized art for every person in their family. Great Christmas gift, right? <laughs> So for our science this week, we did lung capacity, and we talked about what capacity meant, and that it means how much something can hold, and we did our experiment from Van Cleves, and that went really well, and then we didn't have time for each student to try to see what their lung capacity was, so instead, as a class, we took a normal breath and held it and saw how long we could hold it, and then we took a really deep breath and saw if we could hold it any longer. That was just a little add-on there, and we were actually able to, on average, get about 10 seconds more for our deep breath and holding it than our um, normal breath, so that was really fun. We also discussed whether we thought an adult or a kid or baby, who would have the greatest lung capacity, and everyone pretty much agreed that the adult would just because their lungs are bigger. So, um, for review, we were upstairs in the gym, which was really nice to get to use that today, and we did our beach ball, and uh, we just tossed it around, hit it around, and when I called, called it, I called right or left hand and whatever hand it was on, that's um, what we reviewed. That subject is what we reviewed. And then we also did some map races, which was really fun. Um, you guys, your kids are doing really great with identifying where the states are and what the capitals are. So I, I'm really proud of them for that. So that's all we did for this week. It was a great class today. I hope that um, everybody has a great week and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye guys.